Everybody, it's me, Mia Fran again. Welcome back to my channel and to another Fruits Basket review episode video thing with Chantal. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about episode 15 of Fruits Basket season 2 called See You Later. This was a pretty interesting episode. There were some parts where I'm like getting ready to ball my eyes out. I kept it cool though. I managed to contain myself. I'm not sure about you, but me too, man. Me too. But I was close to like tearing up a couple times. I was like tearing up with the freaking Yuki, man. Mm -hmm. Those parts were the ones that hurt the most because we were seeing like everything with his mom, and it's his mom is such a bitch, man. She's terrible. She's a terrible, awful person, and you could tell even like. So, basically in this episode we have parent-teacher conferences. So we kind of get to see everyone's like parent-teacher conferences a little bit, like Uo-chan and Hanajima, like we get to see theirs. Uo's like, I just want to start working because my dad doesn't make enough money and we can't live on his own income alone, so we gotta, I gotta get a job. And then Hanajima's like, oh well, I mean, I guess I could like just graduate <laughs> if I want to. <laughs> And her mom is just kind of like, oh, please, you know, good luck. I hope you can graduate. And the teacher's basically like, I mean, if you just put in effort, you can graduate. Because I love that Hanajima's, like, goals or whatever is, like, run off to a foreign country and become a housewife. <laughs> I mean, that's a good goal, man. It is a good goal. At least she knows, like, what she wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so then we have uh, Toru's parent-teacher conference so you know last episode Shigure said he is gonna stand in for like her relatives her grandpa is still injured and her aunt's like well I don't know if I can make it but then you know Shigure was like oh no I'll stay I'll go and stand in for for you it's fine I like that like when they show that it's Toru's conference like there's all these girls outside the room they're like oh who is that like handsome man that walked into the room over there and it's just Shigure in a fucking suit so at first I thought it was gonna be Ayame, but then we see it's fucking Shigure. <laughs> Wearing Hattori's suit, actually. Yeah. Which we find out later. And he only did that to tease Mayu. And she's like, god damn it. Like, I loved her reactions throughout their whole conference. Because it's really fun- because like, Toru- like, none of the kids know that like, she knows them. That they kind of like, know each other, have a past with each other. So it's really funny to like see Toru kind of be like, what? What is happening? Like, why are they so... Why are they like <laughs> so in this like cold stare off with each other? She calls it diamond dust. It was pretty funny. <clears throat> yeah. It was really funny. But basically, you know, Toru kind of says like, well, I, I'm just going to work. As soon as I graduate, I'm going to work and get a job and, you know, just kind of do what my mom was doing when we were living together and then they ask the t Mayu asks her like and are you gonna move out of Shigure's house and she's like yeah I'm gonna move out uh, of the house as soon as I graduate and then Shigure has to be all teasing again and be like well you could just marry me then you don't have to leave <laughs> and Toru's like what huh <laughs> eh excuse me and then I, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that like, he's, tw he says he's 28 and I'm like, damn, that's old. But then I'm also like, uh, excuse me, but like, uh, how old are you <laughs> saying that? And I'm just kind of to myself and it's like, oh yeah, I'm almost, I'm a, an almost 20, says an almost 27 year old woman. So he's not that old. Yeah. He's old, but he's not that old. Cause not I'm that also, old. I'm also almost that old. <laughs> so whatever we're not late 20s we're not old he's good it looks good for 28 he does man i mean i know he's animated but like any 28 year old guy that looks like that damn son what the fuck have i been doing <laughs> <laughs> i mean granted i don't look my age either like i look pretty I, people still think i'm like in high school sometimes same here man because i have like a baby face i still get carded whenever i'm trying to like, if I 
get something to drink with my friend. Yeah. I still have to get fucking carded. It's okay, me too. I'm the only one that has to get carded. Everyone else is like, oh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? No, yeah. I'm, you know, whatever. But he looks good for 28. That means Hatsuri and Ayame are also like 28. Around that same age. That means their teacher's the same age too, pretty much. Damn, we as old as their teacher. Shit. What are we doing with their lives, man? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, as somebody who does not look their age, I'm actually pretty happy when people kind of think I'm younger or like early 20s still. Like, oh, really? Thanks. Thanks. It's because I have the face of like a perpetual like 20 year old, I guess. I have such like a round face, I guess it still kind of looks like I'm younger than what I am. Toru is still kind of like, I still don't know what to do, like, cause she's still kind of stuck in like trying to decide what she wants to do. Cause she wants to do like what her mom did and her mom just like, I mean her mom didn't graduate from high school and we've known that since season one and her mom always wanted to like, just told Toru like, no, you need to graduate, like at least graduate and then decide what you want to do from there. So she's pretty determined to at least graduate. And then, you know, whatever she wants to do with her life from that point, you know, that's all up to her. It's also just kind of reminded me of, like, how much pressure you get put on you when you're that age in high school. Because it's like, especially when you're, like, a year away, like, when you're a junior. And it's like, oh, you need to be, start thinking about colleges you want to apply to and all this shit. And it's like, ugh, I don't even know what I want to eat for lunch tomorrow. Like, you expect me to, like figure out what I want to do with my- because like even when you get to college like you can pick the major you want to study but then like you might change it after that like you don't really know man I and mean, you can tell like mostly our main three really feel that pressure of like what am I gonna do with my life especially Kyo and Yuki I mean Toru yes as well but like Kyo specifically because he already knows what's gonna happen to him and you see that like really it was very hard to watch that like I legit was like <laughs> this was where I was actually like kind of tearing up when like you see him and um his uh dad come in it's just like god I don't know why but their relationship makes me want to cry all the time I don't <laughs> I don't understand I like I legit like just cannot fathom like why but it was like yeah it was like kind of really hard to see like you know the teacher ask them like okay yeah so I mean you know you want to think about what you want to do um like they're kind of just discussing it like it's no big deal like oh he can decide what he wants to do later but Kyo is like thinking to himself like I have like barely any time left because he basically has like no choice but to accept it yeah even though, clearly, he doesn't want that. Yeah. Because even then, after their conference is done, he's kind of thinking about it. He's, like, the only thing he can think about doing, like... He's like, I just I just want to be by your side. That's what I want to... That's, that's the thing I want to do. And you're right, it's all about, like, him just accepting what his fate is. All the while having to pretend, like, that's not the case. He even gets told, he's like, well, you know... You, you don't have to like decide for right now you don't, you can just think about you know the future later and it's just like I mean that's wishful thinking but it's like I mean at this point Kyo is like ready to you know be locked away forever he feels like he yeah. doesn't have the choice to even think about wanting a different future which is why he hasn't really given it much thought because he's like well what future four walls and a little wi barred window, that's his future. Uh. <laughs> In the dark. Which is why his fu his quote-unquote future needs to happen now in terms of like be with Toru. Like just be around her and like have fun with her and hang out and you know get to do all the things he wants to do f freely before his actual future of being locked up forever comes to fruition. Cause yeah. it's, cause it's like, at, after, cause it's like once they graduate, like, like no one cares anymore. Like once you graduate, the school doesn't care anymore. They don't care about what you're doing. Like your friends, you're n probably not going to see all your high school friends again for a long time or never. So like once we graduate and I get put into that cage, like it doesn't matter. Like I don't matter anymore. 
Like, no one's gonna care, no one's gonna come visit me, like, everyone's gonna forget about me and just move on. And, like, it's really tough kind of, like, thinking about that. And I like how each of them experience it, like, very differently. Toto's just, like, full of anxiety, Kyo has no future, and then Yuki, he still doesn't know what to do. Or if it's, like, the right thing to do. Yeah. Especially with, with stuff going on with his mom. His mom is a total bitch, man. She, like, decides everything for him. Oh, Even though God. she's, like, not around him ever. No, it's exactly like how I am at putting All she cares about is, like, status and money. Yeah. And that was, like, really sad to see the flashback of, like, when he's little and he's telling his mom, like, No, please, can you, like, t I want to go home with you. I don't want to stay here. Like, Akito says mean things to me and keeps me in that room. And then his mom just kind of ignores what he says and is like, Oh, isn't it so nice that you're being acknowledged and take and Akito's taken a liking to you? Alright, well, I'll see you later. Bye! Like, she just so tunes bad. everything out about what he's saying. And then even in the flashback when he's older, like, when he's living back at the house with her, it's just him basically telling her, like, I want to go to this school. It's an out-of-the-way school because I hate living here. I hate the Soma family. I always have and I always will and that's why I want to go to this school and she kind of like gets all mad at him and shit and is like why are you even bringing this up you never used to talk like this like you haven't said any of those things since you were a kid like I thought you kind of grew up past that or whatever and it's like well how would you know you like don't even talk to him it's like she doesn't even pay attention to him he ne basically neglected yeah. Yuki so much so that she rescheduled this parent-teacher conference to like a different day where they have to like have the conference in like a smaller room like it's not even in the classroom it's like in some storage room and she like basically tells mayu like the teacher she's like well i've already picked out all these uh places he can apply to he's gonna be this this and this like he's gonna he's already um gonna be like the head of something in the family so he's very important so he's gonna have to do all this stuff and yuki's kind of just like Wait, what the what the heck? Like I you never told me this. You never discussed this with me. We never talked about this. Like this isn't Even Maya this is not what was I like, want. Maya was shook. She was <laughs> like, uh, what the fuck is happening right now? I know. The whole time I was watching it, I was like, I was like, you're really gonna say all this shit to your kid in front of the teacher? Like, what the fuck? Like that and means Maya was like, that means she really don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yeah, and Mayu was like trying to defend him and help him out. And she was like, You can't talk to him like that. You need to listen to him. She was being a really good teacher, man. Like, yeah. I wish I had teachers like that because a lot of the teachers out there are pretty shitty. So she a good teacher. She's, mm -hmm. yeah, she's just trying to defend her student, even if it's, you know, against his parent. Whatever. But it's like, it's so obvious that, like, she clearly knows that he doesn't live with his mom. Bitch, how do you know, like, anything? Like, how do you know what he wants? You don't- he doesn't even fucking live with you. Thank god for Ayame when I know. he, like, oh my god. bolted in. I was like, That was so. fucking great. I was, like, I was clapping the whole time. And then I started clapping even more when Yuki goes up and defends Ayame to their mom. Cause she calls Ayame useless. Like, she's just like, what, like, why the hell are you here? Like, you're- you're just interrupting and being silly and frivolous and useless and- like She tries to throw him under the bus and yeah. make him feel bad. She's like, well, you neglected him too. And that's when Yuki finally, like, voices his opinion and stands up to his mom. I was so proud. Me Because then he's like, no, like, we're- we're good, man. Like, he cares about me. He's there for me. And I don't mind that. And he's not useless. He called him dependable. Yeah, and he's like, I can depend on him. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, that was so cute. It was cute. And then fucking Ayami, yeah, I mean, of course, he has to whip at his phone. And Yuki's like, no, don't say anything, please. Don't tell Hattori. And that's when his mom is really like, since when have you guys gotten so close? What the hell is this? Because even it's before like... even before Ayami like, broke into the room, she even like made a comment about him. Like, I already had have to deal with Ayami and his bullshit. Like, now I have to deal with this shit with Yuki. She basically goes calling Ayame a, a failure. Yeah. And it's like, bitch. He's thriving. He's good. He he has a good job that he runs. Still really popular with people. He's, you know, his own person. He got a good assistant who, you know, will do anything for him. And he beautiful. Like, what? How is that? How is he a failure? But, you know, it's like, well, to her, her children are failures because they haven't been doing what she wants them to do. In terms of like, you know, 
making a lot of money or being really educated and having a big job or whatever and being uh, rich and powerful, what the fuck ever. She's just like a clout chaser. Because even then it's like, well, that's not your success. That's their success. You did nothing. So even yeah. if they do succeed past her expectations, it's like, well, you didn't do jack shit. To the point where she fucking leaves the room and says that she wished she had never given birth to either of them, which I'm like, damn, that's pretty fucked up. I feel like she basically just had children so that way they could be successful and it reflects off of her. Not because she wanted them, but because it's like, well, if I have a child, I can make them successful and take all the credit. And then, it, you know, it just so happens that they were both cursed by the Zodiac, so. Yuki then decides to just go after her and confronts her, kind of. Because he doesn't before. He, he like, try, he's gonna try to say something before, and he doesn't. And then when he defends Ayame, he does say something. But then this time, he just kind of goes up to her and is like, I'm going to do this, like, how I want to do it. Like, I, I do want to, like, you know, go to higher education, like, go to college and stuff, university, whatever. But I'm gonna apply to the places that I want to apply to. Like, you're not gonna do that for me. You can't decide where I'm going and what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do that for myself. Don't let or... other people influence you. Yeah, don't let, you know, if your parents want you to be something, but that's not really what you want to do, like, don't feel pressured to do it. Like, if you don't want to go to college, you don't have to. That's why it's optional. <laughs> Higher education mm -hmm. is not for everyone. Plus, you know, you don't have to go right now. You can take some years off and then go when you want to, if that's something that you want to do. It's all up to you. And Yuki kind of realizes that too when he like puts his hand on his mom's shoulder and he's kind of like, when did she get so small and like skinny? Like when I was a kid, she used to be like towering over me. And it's like now he's like the one towering over her. Because he's like much taller than her. And damn, their mom looks good for however the hell old she is too. She's pretty, but she's an ass. Yeah, she's a fucking bitch. But she... I mean, she looks good for whatever. She's probably in her 40s. And then their mom just kind of fucks off, I guess. And then Yuki gets pulled into the student council room. And some shit's going down. But before that, he passes by Toru in the hallway and he tells her, like, Oh, see you later. Then guess who's in the student council room? It's Ayame. That was fucking hilarious. Dude, that was so fucking funny. And I love how, like, <laughs> like it cuts from, like, showing, like, Manabe and what's her, the other girl. I forget her name. Um, the new girl from the previous Student Council episode. They're both kind of, like, kind of, like, f like falling all over Ayame. Like, oh, he's so cool, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it cuts to Yuki and you see like in the background like Machi's gonna like come into the room and then she sees what's going on and like nopes the fuck out. <laughs> she like leaves. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm not getting involved in that, whatever that is. Oh, I also liked the little part um, after Kyo's uh, parent-teacher conference when uh, Toru and Hanajima and Uo come up to him and they're like, hey, and he's like, when he catches the shoe, I thought that was pretty great. It was, and then- but, Oh my uh, gosh, Hanajima! <laughs> she's fucking in love with- Oh yeah, she's in love with, with his dad. <laughs> that was hilarious. She's like, he's handsome, and he's then she's just like, what? I mean, I agree. He I, is I man. agree wholeheartedly. He's a handsome looking man. With or without long hair. He's a good looking man. But I love that like Toru is like, oh, we should have- like, a party, like, where we're gonna eat, um... So men. So men, yeah, there you go. Like, we're gonna have a so men eating party, like, let's all get together and, and have a party and stuff. And then it cuts back to Kyo, and I just loved, like, the smile on his face that he got. Like, he was really happy and, like, excited that they were gonna do me. this. It was, like, really yeah. cute. I'm just, I was just like, oh, that was really nice. Because, like, five seconds before, he was, like, thinking the worst terrible things. And it's, like... She asked him, like, yeah, like, let's go have, like, let's have fun or whatever. Like, as soon as he, like, kind of sees how happy and excited she is, he, like, gets happy and excited. It's just like, uh, it was very oh. nice to see. It was. And then it was also really nice to see, you know, like, Yuki's having all these flashbacks, but his mom being a total bitch and whatever. But then he, like, thinks about Toru, like, cheering him on, and he's, like, it, like, brings, like, color into the room and stuff. It was, like, very cute. 
And I liked when they passed by each other. That was cute, too. Yeah. I like how she takes off her ribbon. Yeah. And she's like, well, winter's coming, but we still have a little bit of warmth left here. It's like... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, because they're only, like, a little over a year until they graduate, which is going to go by, like, really fast. Pretty, like, you know? Yeah. Because that's what it feels like, you know? Se like, your last year of high school feels like it goes by really fast. For sure. Honestly, I feel like your last year of, like, anything. Middle school, high school, college, whatever. Like, it feels like it goes by really fast. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, shit, I really don't know what to do after this. I mean, it's sad, but it's also, like, I like seeing these characters go through those kinds of feelings, because it's like, oh, I was like that, too, one time. It was it a good was episode. I loved, I loved the interactions, especially, like, Mayu and the others, because I love that we know that she has, like, relationships with other characters that, like, like I said before, that the kids don't know. Yeah. Like, they don't know that she dated Shigure, and they don't know that she knows Hattori and Ayame, too. Like, they don't know that. I like at the end that she's, she ended up calling Hattori and she was like, yeah, Yame was here. I'm sorry, you gotta deal with all this. <laughs> yeah. So they are clearly talking. Yeah, they're definitely talking to each other, so... Fingers crossed, guys! Any other thoughts? I think that's about it. Other than... Uh, I, know, I think it was Hanajima that said that she can sense how twisted Shigure really is. Yeah. Yeah, when Toru was like, oh, he's so nice. You know, he's just looking out for me. He's a nice guy. He cares about mm -hmm. everybody. And, like, even Uo is also, like, that dude's got some, like, some, like, dark shadowiness inside of him. Like, you need to be careful. Mm-hmm. Because even Mayu does tell him you need to be more, yeah, like, exactly. careful. Yeah, I was gonna say, because remember Hattori told him that, too. Like, he told him, like, in, you know, pre episodes previously, like, you need to be nicer to them. Like, you need to make sure that, you know, you're treating, like, Kyo, Toru, and Yuki, like, you know, nicely without, like, teasing them in a, like, a sinister way. Because, you know, they all know how he is. But yeah, even Mayu is like, you need to treat her more kindly, I guess, more sincerely. And that's what we learned. He's like, well, I had a relative tell me the same thing. Not that he was gonna, like, think about Hattori, but no. Someone else popped into his mind. See, I thought that too. I was like, oh, it's Hattori, but nope. It cut to when Rin came over and it was Rin saying that. She's like, do you just see them as tools or actual people? And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> see, and that was also another thing that was brought up with the flashback with Yuki and his mom. Where he asks her, like... Am I just some tool to you? Like, do you just use me as a tool for your own gains? And she just tells him basically, she's like, so what if I do? I can't believe Maya put him on the spot saying, you know, I feel like if you end up falling in love with someone, you probably treat him like crap too. I was like, shit. Well. Because <laughs> guess who else said that? <laughs> guess who else? Hattori. They are very like-minded. Mm -hmm. I need. We need more scenes with Mayu and Hattori. I hope we do get more. Um, I'm not sure how the show is going to do it. Because there have been some scenes where I'm like, I don't remember that from the manga. I think they're expanding upon certain things. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely see. So the next episode is called Ask Him For Me. But I don't know whose voice is that. It sounded like three different characters' voices. Again, we're not familiar with the Japanese it's, voices. It's because, it's like... Some of them sound like the same person, like, especially the female characters, or like characters <laughs> voiced by female seiyus. Whereas, like, I don't know, I feel like, I guess because it's in English, when you listed the English show, because it's in a language I can understand more, obviously, like, I speak English fluently. Like, I can tell who's who. But also, like, at this point, like, Momiji in Japanese does not say anything in German anymore, so it's like, what the fuck, why did they stop doing that? Whereas in the dub, he still has an accent, and I, like, he'll still say things in German, and it's like, okay, I know that's Momiji talking. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know, I guess I recognize the, uh, English voice is a little bit better. But I could not fucking tell who it was. I think it was, it sounded like Toru, but it also kind of sounded like Momiji. I thought it sounded but like Kisa. But it also Kisa. sounded like Kisa, too. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. At first I was like, is that Toru? But then I thought it might be Kisa. So it might be one of the littles. It might be one of the kids, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to find out in the next episode, but... 
as far as uh, what happens next, I can't fucking remember. Other than that, I think we're good to go. I think so too. Alright, well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you do have anything you guys want to discuss in the comments, go ahead and uh, leave a comment. You know, give us your thoughts on uh, what you thought happened in this episode or about what happened in this episode. Um, you know, if you have further thoughts of your own to expand upon what we discussed, feel free to do that. We'll try to answer in uh, due time, I guess, because <laughs> I, like, I'm so sorry, guys, but, like, YouTube never notifies me when I get new comments sometimes. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It really just depends. It depends if you're the chosen one, basically. Yeah, so... Sometimes I see your guys' comments like a week or two after you've posted it and I feel really bad for not responding in time So I'm really sorry if I don't respond to the comments on my videos, you know, in a yeah. timely manner uh, It's just because stupid YouTube does not tell me when I get notifications on my Fruits Basket videos specifically I haven't gotten any comments lately and like I'll get like the notification for it But when I look it says that I have nothing so I'm like what the fuck? I, and then, then, I, I, then I have to go to the video and then I look at the comments and see that there's comments and it's like, from two weeks ago, and I'm like, oh shit. Yep, that's basically how it is right now. So, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna try to check the comments more often to, uh, you know, get in the conversation uh, with you guys in the comments a little bit more. Um, but please feel free to, like, share the videos if you want to. You know, share the playlist so we can all discuss things together. Uh, about Fruits Basket. But anyway, thank you for joining me once again, Chantal. Uh, next week, we're going to have a video on her channel. Uh, please subscribe to our podcast. Links are in the description. Please go follow us on Twitter as well and sub to Chantal. Uh, links will also be at the end of the video. And if you want to hear our thoughts about the previous episodes of Season 2 of Fruits Basket, the playlist is also going to be at the end of the video. So have fun, stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye!